Hi, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this PAC video short, we're going to cover existing training assessments, an important component of the analysis methodologies of the PAC processes for training and development, learning, and knowledge management. PAC is an acronym, performance-based, accelerated, customer and stakeholder driven, training and development of any blend. The fourth component methodology of the analysis methodology of the PAC processes for training and development, learning, and knowledge management is to impact our ability to increase appropriate reuse. We do existing training assessments, ETA, or call it whatever is appropriate for you, ELA. The point here is to identify all of the current content, formal training, documentation, information, flyers, marketing materials, product knowledge, literature, whatever you've got that has any relevance to the performance and the enabling knowledge and skills of the earlier analysis. So where the performance model and knowledge and skill matrices are typically generated in a face-to-face -face group meeting of master performers and other subject matter experts, this existing training assessment is often done, most often by me, done after that meeting. So I don't take up the time of those folks just to go through and figure out what do we have in the inventory, because they may or may not know. They may have been masters of performance for 10 years now and don't know what was generated and being delivered and is now available to the rookies. So we want to understand what content do we have, if it's a typical course or not, but we can understand what is its name, its number, how is it delivered, what format is it in, how long is it, who owns it, can we mess around with it and change it, or no, that's owned by somebody else. So we can use it as is, but we cannot change it and adapt it. We might be able to create other materials to augment it, but we can't adapt this source content, unless, of course, we own it, and then we do have that option. What are the target audiences this is typically aimed at? Because we might have an authenticity issue. If you're teaching active listening skills to some sort of an inside counter sales person role and their active listening context, that could be diff very different than negotiators uh, negotiating multi-million dollar contracts and the active listening that they need to do in that performance context two courses addressing both of those same audiences, or excuse me, one course addressing both of those audiences is not going to be authentic enough to truly have impact because it actually transfers to the job context. So you gather various information around existing training and development or content or whatever you want to call it. And the goal here is to identify what have we already got covered in terms of the performance tasks and outputs and the enabling knowledge and skills. And after we're done identifying what we've got, we'll have an easier time of identifying, well, where are the gaps? Where don't we have coverage at all? Where is it that we have content that we can use as is right now? What is it that we can use AM after modification? And what is truly a gap? I hope this video and this video series is helpful to you in your practice of performance-based training and development, learning and knowledge management. I've been practicing, publishing, and presenting on these topics since the early 1980s. My more recent book, Six Pack, covers all of this in great detail.